How does Amos, writing some 700 years before the birth of Christ, know so much about the Savior's death on the cross? I'm Mitch Kimbrell, one of the pastors at Christ Memorial Church, and we're continuing today in our walk through the book of Amos, one of the minor prophets, and we find him in chapter 8 of his book of prophecy, prophesying against the northern kingdom of Israel on account of their pride and their idolatry and their covenant unfaithfulness toward God. Listen to Amos chapter 8, verses 9 and 10. And on that day, declares the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and will darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on every waist and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. What Amos is prophesying here is of the invasion by the foreign nation of Assyria into the northern kingdom of Israel, which would happen in 722 BC. Assyria invades, destroys the northern kingdom's capital of Samaria, destroys the kingdom, sends the people away in exile. But Amos's prophecy, even more than the destruction of Israel by the hand of Assyria, prophesies concerning the cross. Amos says, on that day, declares the Lord God, I'll make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. Yes, darkness is, a, is, is the language of judgment and sin in the scriptures. But Matthew 27 tells us that when God's son died in the place of sinners on the cross, the sun went down at noon and the whole of the land was darkened in broad daylight from noon to 3 p.m. And indeed, as Amos says, it was like the morning for an only son. God's only begotten son suffered in the place of sinners like you on the cross. God's son exiled from the father. So worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Rejoice that through faith in him, he was exiled so that you would never be. Trust in him.